Well, hello there, everybody, and welcome to another Tuesday Teaching Tips with me, Sally Cathcart from The Curious Piano Teachers. And thank you so much for dropping in and watching this. Now, today I'm going to do the first part of um, two about polyrhythms. And this comes um, out of a request by a teacher um, called Anastasia. Thank you for that request, Anastasia, who wanted to know about how to teach threes against fours. And I, I was thinking about this and I thought, okay, if we're going to do this, then we need to start sort of at the beginning, which is threes against twos, and maybe even before that. So I think when you're teaching polyrhythms, and obviously this is at a, a not a beginner or even elementary, or even possibly early intermediate, it's probably going to be coming late intermediate, going into advanced level. So I think the first thing to think about is that, um, like I've been saying quite a lot, be led by the concept. If you know twos against threes is something that your pupil is ready for, and we'll talk about that being ready in a moment, then um, work out how you want to teach them the concept and then apply it to a piece of repertoire. So that's slightly differently to how a lot of people teach, starting with a repertoire, and then the concepts come out of that. Instead, I'm suggesting be proactive with the concepts. So let's think about what being ready is, preparation. So in order to even start to think about doing polyrhythms, the, the, the student, first of all, has got to be able to divide up a beat by two, and divide up a beat by three. So, for example, if I'm just keeping a beat here, then that pupil has got to be able to go one, two, or one and a two and a one and a two. Yeah, that's the first thing to be able to switch quite happily back between the two and the three. One thing that I love to do with my pupils at this particular level is do something called a rhythm scale with them. And just very simply, without getting into the whole scale playing thing, um, they start with a one octave in crotchets, orthodox. Can they do that? And then second time, they're going to play it in quavers or eighth notes, same beat. as well and then three octaves in triplets same beat and to be able to switch then backwards and forwards so a rhythm scale is a really and of course you can go into semi quavers as well really a rhythm scale is a really useful tool and then maybe you could play a little game with them where they switch from one shows a certain degree of rhythmical uh, certainty and confidence and that's going to set them up in the right place so that's the first thing preparation absolutely key and then when it comes to combining the two putting the twos against threes um, a very popular thing to do is to say nice cup of tea and indeed that does work nice cup of tea nice cup of tea however I don't think it's necessarily the best way to start off because you've got to know which hand goes where before you know how to do the nice cup of tea. So I actually like to start by getting uh, the students speaking the coordination that they're going to do. It's a bit like learning to dance. I have noticed that when you learn to dance, people will speak the instructions right, left, together, right, left, together. Yeah, And exactly the same here. It's going to be... Uh, Together, right, left, right, together, right, left, right, together. And it's one thing for you to teach them in initially how to say that, but then you need to pass over to them as quickly as possible so that they are the ones who are saying together, right, left, right. Or together it could, or alternatively, it could be together, left, right, left, together, left, right, left, together, left, right, left. And you can either do that on your knees, you can do it on the top. Whatever you do, try to make it as, as, as light and as fluent rhythmically as you can. Left, right, left, together, left, right, left, together, left, right, left. And please don't underestimate the, uh, the speaking aloud. It's a critical step of, of 
learning how to do twos against threes or any kind of polyrhythms or any kind of learning to be honest so we've tapped the rhythm on the lid and then once they have got that coordination together then you can begin to go onto the piano and i like this idea from from graham fitch actually of doing it on the black keys so of course you've got three black keys and you've got two so you can just do together left teach a student both ways initially probably not i would just focus on the one that i want them to do first but i'm just giving you both options for the moment so having done it maybe on the black keys um i would then play it go back to a scale i wouldn't go close to a piece of music yet um, that you're going to find this in so i might do just a c major scale together this on C the fingering tends to go a bit wonky on that I don't really I'm not really fussed because I'm not doing it for, for fingering so D might be to better and what I love is that you can spend quite a few minutes in a lesson doing this with the pupil and they might be really struggling and getting a bit frustrated in which case you just say okay let, let's leave it you go home and practice it and they will come back I can guarantee you the next week and be able to go listen just so lovely and you can tell you absolutely know they've had to work at it and what it is is the brain finds a groove once it's done a pattern a few repeated times it literally the neurons in your brain will fire up and make a pathway through the brain so it gets easier and easier the more times it's repeated so that's the second part really play it as a scale before you go anywhere close to a piece and then finally, you can actually break out the piece of music that that rhythm is in. Um, and the student then by then knows the strategy that they need to take to be able to get to it. I mean, there is this German dance by Haydn, for example, which is triplet in the right hand and quavers in the left hand. One, two, three. <laughs> And then there is the very, uh, probably one of the best known pieces for twos against threes um, is the first arabesque by Debussy. And I think this is probably where I learnt really consolidated my twos against threes where you get. Yeah. And you've got to be really fluent actually about the way that you do that. So I hope that's been helpful for getting the started, the, the, the kind of the, the basic polyrhythm idea going. This is about twos against threes. And the question is to break it up and do it in these tiny, tiny little steps, um, doing it by tapping, doing it by um, scales before you go close to the piece itself. Really, twos against threes is very straightforward. In fact, I was going to show you something because really all twos against threes is, is this rhythm. Let me find it. Here we go. Let me show you this. That's, let me say, yay, that's what a two against three rhythm is. And when you put the hands, it looks a bit strange like this, but you can see one hand plays the notes going up. I'm going to change that a bit. Oh, I've done that wrong. <laughs> Hang on a minute, you can tell this is live, can't you? Let's do that one, and I'll do that one. So that should be there. I don't know what I'm talking about. There we go. Yeah. I've made a mess of that, but I, hopefully that will give you an idea that, that uh, so that you sort of understand what I mean. It is quaver, two semi-quavers, quaver. That's another way of thinking about it. Next week, I will be back tackling the slightly more complex issue of yeah, threes against fours. So thank you so much for watching and uh, hope to see you next week for another set of Tuesday teaching tips. Okay, bye-bye for now.